Happy Halloween and welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we are going to be doing a special Halloween paradox, the paradox of horror. Now, the paradox of horror, also called the paradox of tragedy, is a paradox for emotions. Generally, emotions like fear, pain, anger, sadness are seen as negative, and individuals usually avoid them. However, when it comes to fiction, movies, plays, books, we often seek out and appreciate stories that make us sad, angry, or afraid. Put another way, the paradox of horror is the question of why people like horror movies when they don't like being scared in normal life. Some, such as Aaron Smuts, have formulated this as a trilemma. A trilemma is three statements that cannot be held and for one to remain logically consistent. But usually those three statements are all fairly intuitive. Here's a simplified version of Smuts's trilemma. One, tragedy and horror in fiction cause negative emotions. Two, people avoid things that cause negative emotions. And three, people do not avoid tragedy and horror in fiction. All of these seem fairly intuitive. It does seem that people are really afraid and do cry when they watch scary movies or sad movies. Um, it does seem that people generally avoid things that cause them to have negative emotions. And it does seem that people do not, in fact, avoid tragedy and horror in fiction. People go to horror movies. People go to sad movies quite frequently. So what's going on here? How can these three all be so intuitive, but not be logically consistent. Well, various philosophers have offered different responses to this paradox. Aristotle, who arguably was the first to identify the paradox, denies the second premise, that people avoid things that cause negative emotions. For Aristotle, tragedy does cause a negative emotion, but it produces a catharsis, or a purification of those negative emotions, and so people don't necessarily avoid all things that cause negative emotions. Some things that cause negative emotions are actually required and a good thing. Check out our series on Aristotle's Poetics for more on this. Other philosophers, such as David Hume, reject the first premise that tragedy and horror in fiction cause negative emotions in the first place. Hume claims that in fact we're not experiencing the same emotion of fear when we watch a horror film as if we were truly afraid. That These are qualitatively different emotions. You're not actually sad in the same way if you watch a sad movie as you would be if your dog died. In fact, in the context of fiction, these emotions are positive emotions for Hume and are experienced in a positive way, and therefore we don't have any need to avoid them. However, I'm a bit skeptical of the overall framing offered by this paradox because I don't think there needs to be one answer to this paradox for all individuals. It seems to me that individuals may have different experiences when it comes to horror or tragedy. Some might actually experience a positive emotion when they're watching a horror movie. Others might experience the negative emotion but find that a positive release and find it cathartic even though they actively experience the same negative emotion that they would if they were actually sad or afraid in real life. While still others might effectively deny the third premise and not enjoy horror or tragedy at all. And particularly based on the fact that there do seem to be people out there that do fit that third category, I see no reason that there needs to be one size fits all solution to this paradox, as the variety of human experience is vast, and there do seem to be at least some people who don't like horror movies at all. So who's to say that there couldn't be people who experience negative emotions but find it cathartic, as well as people who experience actually positive emotions that are qualitatively different from the negative emotions in the wild? What do you think? Does everyone fit into one category of this paradox? Or might individual experiences be sufficiently different to mean that there's not really only one solution? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Happy Halloween! Also, a quick note for those of you who have been enjoying the Philosophy Fact of the Day series. We're finishing that series up today. Today's the last day of it here on this main channel. We're going to be shifting it over to a weekly series on our second channel, XFi on Experimental Philosophy. So if you enjoyed that series and you want to check out more, go subscribe to XFi where you will get regular updates with more Philosophy Facts of the Day. Happy Halloween and stay skeptical.